Hi guys, <clears throat> it is a just a nasty, miserable, hot summer day here in the end times in paradise. We have supposedly made it to Tuesday, September 25th, where it is now a brisk 93 degrees with a heat index of about 100 in, uh, in Garfield, Texas. So. Uh, I think it's an appropriate day here in the fall of 2018 to bring you, uh, I'm going to do a whole little rantlet on this article. This was, uh, this was going to be the opening article of my climate change meltdown roundup rant. But we're going to make this, because I'm playing around with my new camera, which you might notice some of you will think is a better camera than the old camera. So I'm going to make a few different length rants to see how long it takes to upload them. So anyway, we're going to go there. I, several Alert Tribes members sent me this article from The Guardian. Where the hell can I stick? Where can I stick my We Are So Fuck sign? Where do you think is a good place for Hambone to stick his We Are So Fuck sign? Does anyone have any suggestions for that? Anyway. <clears throat> Where should you move to save yourself from climate change? Now, this, even though this is in The Guardian, it's talking about people in the United States. So we're going to look at this article in depth and then come back and make some comments. Heat waves, hurricanes, and floods will make some places, especially Garfield, Texas, in the U.S., inhospitable. Yes. Uh, certain places in the United States will become challenging, if not outright miserable, to live in. Yeah, you know, like in late September when it's a hundred fucking degrees outside. Scientists and some members of the public are starting to question where in the U.S. will remain comfortable to call home. There you go. And the answer, broadly speaking, is north and maybe west. So, uh, yep. You know, Florida, where I will actually continue to be spending a couple of months in the winter, uh, has seen a population boom in recent decades, yes. The southern portion of the state is on course to be submerged by rising seas. The Gulf Coast will get supercharged hurricanes, while the south, west, and southeast U.S. will be baked by increasingly hostile heat. So, what does that, uh, what does that leave? Well, Vivek Shands an expert on climate change's impact on cities from Portland State University. She is suggesting areas toward the north and away from the ocean and that central corridor where you get tornadoes probably look best. Yes, there you go. Move to Tornado Alley for a good place. So, Shan's Shandis recommends looking to live in a band roughly above the 42nd parallel. This is the line that divides New York and Pennsylvania and forms the southern borders of Oregon and Idaho. Uh, yeah, places close to reliable sources of water without being flood prone as the seas rise are attractive, such as areas near the Great Lakes and the Pacific Northwest. Uh, there you go. And River Hermit, this one's for you. There will be bastions, bastions elsewhere. Cincinnati, Ohio, for example, looks surprisingly good. It's close to the Great Lakes. It's away from hurricanes away from the eastern seaboard, it will get more heat waves in Cincinnati, but then again, we all will. Okay, 
So looking at the east coast, much of the east coast will look dicey if the seas rise at such a pace that they'll be six feet higher by the end of the century. Blah, blah, blah. Of course, New York City, you can kiss it goodbye, but you know, I mean, if you're, if you're 50 years old, eh, anyway. So, then it just talks about uh, all of these considerations, you know, trying to figure out where the hell to move to. Jesse Keenan, a climate adaptation expert at Harvard, said he likes Buffalo, New York, and Duluth, Minnesota as climate refuges as they tick many of the appropriate boxes. Uh, let's don't uh, forget cooler climates, access to plenty of fresh water, and don't forget less vulnerability to forest fires as to compare to somewhere like the Pacific Northwest. Uh, and land prices are cheap around Buffalo, New York, and Duluth, Minnesota. Yep. Uh, of course, these safe havens are more of a fantasy wish list for many moderate to low income people as property and rental values rise in desirable areas. Uh, and so he's predicting not many people are going to even move. So anyway, guys, uh, obviously this has been one of the main questions on my mind. Anybody who's following me and uh, your, your old climate refugee here on this floodplain in Texas on this sweltering hot summer July day, uh, a few days away from October here in Austin, Texas, uh, you know, I'm out of here. Uh, I've been gone for the past four summers, as it is, and, y y you know, so my original plan was to move to the Pacific Northwest, somewhere between Northern California and the British Columbia line, but these fucking wildfires, it's no joke, uh, prone to wildfire smoke. Y y you know, if the f even if the fire doesn't directly burn your house down, which is more and more likely every year, is, is that damn smoke. You know, for three summers, 2015, 2016, and 2017, I just said to hell with it. I went east this year, and I'm damn glad I did, because look at, the, look at what happened with the wildfires still are happening out there. I was just talking to this friend of mine. She just got back from Crater Lake National Park. She said she was driving the rim road around the lake, and she could not see the water from the rim road because of the smoke from the wildfires in Oregon. I have completely blown off the, uh, the Pacific Northwest, which pretty much leaves for me, uh, I have settled there. There's that area like, like, you know, upper Minnesota and Michigan, as they were talking about, uh, has has some things going for it, but I've pretty much settled on upstate New York is where I am heading. Uh, upstate New York and New England look about right for me, but you know it still is going to get cold as hell in the winter there, even with the hot summers. So like a clueless moron, I'm still going to be heading down to South Florida in the winter right up until the time it goes underwater. Uh, I'm still going to be spending a couple of months, but I'm heading, uh, looks more and more like the Catskill Mountains for Hambone or somewhere up there in New York. Uh, but I can't get up there until the year after next. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to rent next summer and really find my little bivouac in New York and just dig my heels in. You know, we got Sister Sandy. We got we got several tribes members. I probably have more tribes members in upstate New York than anywhere else. And who else is Kunstler's up there? Uh, uh, Gerald Salente is digging his heels in in the Catskills. Uh, Kunstler's just north of the Catskills. 
uh, and I hear this uh, the, the, this uh, swinging couple from Belize will be heading to Westchester County, New York. Uh, but we don't need to talk about that right now, about living out the end times in the most expensive county in the United States of America. So uh, that's my plan. That's what your old, your old climate refugee is up to. But I would love to hear comments from other people, particularly people in New York and New England, uh, maybe Minnesota and Michigan, uh, what you guys think. And let's hear from some of you who have chosen to dig your heels in the Pacific Northwest. Do you already regret your decision to do that? Uh, anyway, I'm going to wrap this up here and then we're going to come back with the full climate change meltdown roundup rant on this hot summer day in late September in the end times. Smoke them if you got them, and we all know why. Bye, guys.